I'm just really happy to be here. Uh, this is my second time here at the gathering, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful ministry. It's just a joy to be back here. So I just want to thank um, Pastor Ron for um, inviting me back. It was just a wonderful experience the first time I was here, which isn't all that long ago. So um, anyway, I want to say a big hello to all of you and wonder how many of you are with um, our medical ministry for the first time? How many of you are totally new to the ministry? And how many of you have been with our ministry and done some of our events? So I'm seeing kind of some people where I'm not, it looks like kind of half and half. So um, I'll spend a little time talking about the ministry. I don't want to spend too much time because I do want to share the testimonies and get into prayer. But um, it's probably good to share a little bit just because it's an unusual ministry. Um, so I am actually um, both a medical doctor and I'm ordained in ministry, which is kind of an unusual combination. Most of you, when you go to UCSF or Stanford, you're not going to your minister at the medical center who's also doing your lab tests. <laughs> so that part's a little unusual in terms of what the Lord has guided me to do. So um, I don't want to spend too much time, but the, but the background is, is, is kind of unusual. So um, I did start out, of course, in the medical field, and, and I'm located down the peninsula. I'm from the Palo Alto area. So that's where I had my practice and um, loved, loved what I did. I really enjoyed um, seeing patients. And um, I originally thought I was actually going to go into s the surgical field and realized that I probably um, was going to be kind of bored just cutting people, <laughs> taking out a, when, the, when they start you out, they have you take out appendixes and, you know, do stuff like that. And, I kind of got bored with it. So I thought the medical part of the field would be more interesting. And I was always guided toward um, more the whole person. That's how God has guided me. So instead of becoming a nephrologist and just focusing on kidneys or a ophthalmologist and just working with eyes, I really was guided when I did my specialty training to go, you either can go into internal medicine or family medicine if you're doing a little more broad-based, so that's where I was guided. I love the field of family medicine because we do pediatrics, and we do geriatrics, so we're working with people of all ages, we're working with men, we're working with women. So for doing ministry, it's really a great thing because of having this kind of background rather than just having been trained to do eye surgery. <laughs> and then you forget about the rest of the body. So um, so I loved, <clears throat> I loved being a doctor and loved what I did, but as Pastor Ron said, there is some frustration because if you're kingdom-based and you know the Bible, you realize what the potential is in terms of the Lord and what Jesus did during his time on the earth. Um, I had very good results as a doctor and did have a kingdom-based practice, so it was very heart-centered. You know, it was part technical, part lab tests, part, you know, analysis and diagnosis and treatment. And, and even there, I was at the beginning doing office surgery and biopsies and that kind of thing. But I was really much more um, guided toward the relational part and loving people and you know, having close relationship with my patients. And that was really, for me, the joy of what I was doing. Um, as Pastor Ron said, and for those of you that have been with me, I did do a lot of teaching during those, that time. Um, I was on the clinical faculty at the medical school, and I was doing a lot of teaching, um, different kinds of groups, the medical students um, worked with the PAs. Sometimes they'd have me do a lecture for the residents, so kind of flipping all over the place. And I was also doing teaching at other institutions. It wasn't just Stanford, it was Kaiser Hospital invited me to do things like, you know, come and do their grand rounds or, you know, teach residents or something. And I was at hospitals and medical centers all up and down the West Coast. So that's what I was doing during that time, and it was, you know, it was really interesting work. Um, everything has switched since I've gone into ministry. Again, for those of you that are new, I don't do anything at Stanford now on the teaching side. If I go there to the medical center, I go there to pray for people, or to Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. What I do at Stanford is I'm currently a minister there. So I've switched from medicine, and I'm on the main campus now. I'm not on the medical center and I'm part of Christian ministry there. 
So they have some, a few Christian ministries that's under the Office of Religious Life, and that's what I got asked to come in and do. The reason I got asked to do that is some of the ministers went to the hospitals with me, went into the ICU and saw these miracle healings, and they said, we need this at Stanford. <laughs> so, so they invited me on the, you know, to, to do ministry there, and I've been doing that for the last few years and really loving it. But it's a big switch to go from medicine to ministry at a school like Stanford, which is very secular. And it's not a you know, Christian-based school. But I do love what I do there. So again, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but I do want to give you a little bit of a thumbnail on the, the ministry itself. And that basically started now about seven years ago when the Lord guided me into becoming ordained. And that was a real wonderful experience. And at that point, my, really my, my career shifted. You never really do lose medicine when you're a doctor, and it's actually very helpful because the Lord is doing some combination of this. So I, you know, I still am very active. I just, I'm not, you know, I don't have a clinical practice the way that I did for, for some time, but I still work with it a lot. And what happened um, during that first period of time was, as again, Pastor Ron mentioned, um, I did start doing medical ministry, and most of it was in the hospitals. Um, I was invited to minister all over the Bay Area in the hospitals rather than going into the churches. I was at every hospital you can think of. I was at, you know, I did do ministry at Stanford and at Lucille Packard, but I was at the county hospitals. I was at the veterans hospitals, both the San Francisco VA and the Palo Alto VA. I know the VAs really well. Kaiser hospitals, private hospitals like El Camino and Mountain View. So I've been kind of all over the place, which is not normal for a doctor. If you are a doctor and you're one of the few doctors that prays, all you're going to be at is one hospital. You're going to be at the hospital you have admitting privileges in, and you're going to pray for your one or two patients that are in the hospital, and that's it. And the Lord had some different plans because he, he wanted to create more with this. So that's why I was in so many hospitals. Ministers would invite me in from different parts of the Bay Area because parts of their church families were um, in the hospitals. And um, families would ask me to pray for their loved ones. And when I was in the hospitals, there was a lot of supernatural miracle kinds of um, getting me into patients that I really didn't even have any link to. Like if I was in a ward, let's say there were, it was a county hospital and there were four beds, and I was praying for one or two patients, then the other patients would want prayer. I didn't even know. Or people would come up to me at the elevator. They'd hear me talking to a family. They'd say, hey, we want you to pray for, for our family member. So I was kind of all over. Nurses would chase me down the hall and say, this patient in room you know, XYZ wants you to pray. So I really spread out a lot. I was going three days a week and um, loved what I was doing. And that's where I was really trained in the Lord. He became my, um, I don't know what to, he became, I was sort of an intern or a medical student again, but he was the teacher. It was no longer, you know, a secular teacher teaching you anatomy or physiology or something. It was the Lord. And a few things that he showed me during this time that I really always like to share, and I'd like to share again with those of you that are new, because it's very touching to me which is a few things that I learned about God doing this kind of work with such sick people, because you're in the ICU and every... You all been in ICUs? Not seeing hands go up. How many of you have never been in an ICU? <laughs> One person, two, three, four people. So the rest of you have all been in the ICU, so it's a lot of you. So you know what it's like. It's a locked ward, and you just don't walk in there. You press a little button. You have to identify yourself, and you're very limited to where you can go. They'll put you right into the room where, you know, you're, you're there to see somebody. And it's very nursing intensive. Any of you here from the nursing field tonight? Oh, really? That's very cool. Wonderful. Oh, that's super. Are you hospital nurse? Oh, this is great. Wonderful. I love some of, again, during that time I was doing so much of this, I got very close to a lot of the hospital nurses. They, they're wonderful. 
and they would always say, please pray for us too. <laughs> they always wanted me to pray for all the nurses as well as the, any doctors? A doctor. Hey, very cool. What's your field? I was a chiropractor for 24 years. Oh, I love it. That's wonderful. We actually had a couple of chiropractors in our training program. I love the field. I think it's a wonderful field. So is are you retired now or? Oh, you do? That's wonderful. Oh, I love it. I think that's what's a store in this area. Or? Wonderful. Wow, that's a great combination. A lot of the, I have, a, I have some dear friends in the chiropractic field. I love, I love the field. I wish our fields were working the way they should be, which is closer together, because I think there's so much wonderful um, to be had from the chiropractic field. So I'm glad you're able to come tonight. So, um, so anyway, um, what I, what I was seeing with the Lord as I was doing this work was first of all, unlike the field I'm trained in where we're very much trained as specialists. I mean, you're more a general specialist if you're an internist or family medicine. But what I saw the Lord do was if, if, if you were a person who, you know, was a cancer patient in the hospital or if you were, if you had had a major stroke, whatever the issue was, what I loved about God is he would heal every part of you. Unlike what we do in the medical field, again, where you go to your specialist, God was a specialist in everything. And I love that. It's, you know, if, if you were, I prayed for a lot of quadriplegics from all over, and I saw a lot of people, um, one miracle that I saw a lot of was a lot of people getting out of wheelchairs and walking, which is not something we expect medically. In fact, the people are told they're very unlikely to ever not only not walk, but you're quadriplegic. You don't have any f function from the neck or upper shoulders down. And I have many pictures. I, I th probably showed a few of the quadriplegic pictures when I was here the first time. I have a lot of pictures of quadriplegics climbing mountains and quadriplegics. I have a great sequence. Maybe I sh I'm showing that tonight. I don't remember. I'm doing so many of these events. But I have a, some great sequences of quadriplegics in wheelchairs going through moving their arms and legs and then getting out of the wheelchair and you they're still in the hospital and you're seeing them walk so I have wonderful wonderful um, pictures of this and it's all God there's no way in the medical field we could ever create this kind of outcome it's impossible I saw a number of people come back from the dead when I was doing this work that was always kind of a surprise <laughs> It wasn't something that I was necessarily prepared for, but you, you become prepared for whatever God's going to do when you're doing this kind of work. And, and it was always an amazing thing to see because when people would come back from the dead, they, it was like they often didn't have the illness that they had died from. Um, it, was, it was an incredible experience. Um, I can't remember if I shared this testimony when I was here before. But um, I apologize if I did share it, but it's a cool testimony. Um, there was one man that, that I remember praying for who, who um, had had a stroke in his home and he had collapsed. And a very severe, um, very severe <laughs> issue. And he was brought over to the hospital and the reason I was called in to pray for him was one of my very close friends who was part of our home church the home church that I was talking with Pastor Ron about, this was one of our church members, Dennis Bontrager and Ryan Rhodes and Brandon Lee's church. He was one of the guys in our church. He was made the next of kin because the man had no kin in the country. He's actually from outside the country. He's a software and computer engineer. So anyway, he was brought over to the hospital. My friend called me and said, would you come over and pray for him? So it was a very... Um, I walked into his room, he was in the ICU, and it was very intimidating because basically the man, by the time I got there, he had, he had already passed on. They had taped his mouth, and they, his head had tape, and they, his arms were taped down. He was just, um, and, and he just, there was nothing there. And I prayed for him, and, you know, he was flatlined on his EEG, there, he was just gone and he would have been moved out quite soon. So I prayed for him and then I um, left and then my friend called me very excited and said he opened his eyes. So that was cool. <laughs> so I go racing back to the, to the um, ICU and 
I, I look in the room and there's a man, he's all taped up the way he was, but his eyes are open. I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. So I go in and it was really fun because, you know, he's, he can't do anything, but he gives me a little wave. And I, I was very excited with that. It was very friendly and because his eyes kind of shifted toward me, I get a little wave. I go in the room and then his doctor comes in. Um, and it was very interesting because here's the bed and here's me, here's the patient, and here's the other doctor. So he comes in the room and completely ignores me. It was like I wasn't even there. He's just interested in the man. And he looks at the man very quizzically and he just didn't understand it. He said, you know, you've had, we never use the word miracle in the medical field. I don't know. If you hear it, it might be once in a lifetime, which is something we don't use. We're not trained to think of things as miracles. We don't experience miracles very much unless you're, you know, a doctor who's one of those few that, that pray for the sick. So the doctor said, you've had a miracle, and he was really puzzled, and he said, I don't understand it. But he said, you're alive. <laughs> and and he, um, he, he said, keep being alive or something like that. And that was the end. He left. I never saw the doctor. I never saw him again. But I kept going and I kept praying over the man. And he healed beautifully. He, he wasn't like the way some of these patients would be. He wasn't paralyzed on one side. He didn't have a drooping face. You know, his face hadn't, he didn't speak a lot of, you know, kind of gibberish where he didn't have normal words coming out. It was beautiful. He was just he had an amazing healing. It was perfect. It was like nothing had ever happened. And the one thing I did ask him as he, I remember as he was healing really well and we were sitting across from each other, he was no longer in the bed. He could sit up. And, and I said, we kind of got into me praying for him. And he's literally crying. He's so touched by what the Lord did. And I said, were you, a, did you know I was praying for you? And he, he said, somehow or other, he actually knew that he had prayer going on for him. He, he didn't really understand it, but somehow or other, even passed on the way he was, he said, I was somehow aware of this and then was aware of kind of coming back and being alive again. And he didn't have much more to say. I've talked to other people who've come back and they all have kind of similar stories, but it was kind of interesting for him to say. And he actually went back to his country of origin. He was from India. And he had a, um, a wife and a, apparently a wife and a small child because he was here just working and, you know, trying to do a career and, you know, have money go back to th his family. But it was a beautiful healing that the Lord did. And I saw many of these kinds of healings that I just wasn't prepared to see from the medical side. So during that time, it was a, a beautiful experience. I saw quadriplegics walk and people coming back from the dead. I saw a few amazing things in the ICU and burn units. I had one patient who was um, a Down syndrome man who was um, in his early 20s who was in a house that had caught on fire. And they, his mom was a nurse, and he had an older brother, and, and he got pulled out of the house barely alive. And he... Um, he had severe third-degree burns over his whole body. And what was interesting about him, it was a little bit like this other testimony I'm sharing with you, where I, I went in and saw these horrible-looking burns. I mean, the third-degree burns. He's in the, he was in the regular ICU. He wasn't, for whatever reason, he, he wasn't in the burn unit. I don't know why. Anyway, um, I prayed for him. He was another one of these patients I just took off. I was back the next day, and what amazed me was all of the burns had fallen off of his body. And they were, his skin looked beautiful. It was like a baby skin. It wasn't like a burn, it wasn't like God took the burns off and left him with a bunch of broken looking skin or scars. It was like, wow, this is like a beautiful baby skin. It was so beautiful looking. And then, and God did that at, you know, his upper body then. Um, I prayed again because he still had burns on the lower body. Same thing happened. All these, these, you know, burns, just the burn tissue just fell off. And again, there's beautiful skin. And the amazing thing was within a few days, they sent him home. He was gone. There was no reason 
to keep him. He wasn't in the burn unit for six months. He wasn't getting, you know, skin, you know, transplants and everything. He was just gone. And I would see that with these patients that would have these miracles. Um, the, the, quad, the quads would be out of the ICU so fast, a lot of them, where other ones that did not receive prayer could be in there for weeks. Some of them even months if they, it was really an extreme case. But when, when God would do the healing, it was, it was speeded up. It was always accelerated. It was an amazing thing to see. So that was my, I mean, I could spend, we could be here all night and I could just go on and on and on and <laughs> put you all to sleep with, with ICU stories. But anyway, that was my internship with the Lord, seeing everything heal and seeing a lot of things heal that people weren't even in the hospital for. He would make the blind see and the deaf hear and you're not in the ICU because you're deaf. You know, that's like a beside all the other stuff that's going on. And I would see people in their 80s and 90s, you know, their deafness heal. So it was a very interesting experience for me. And then just a few more things. Again, I've, I'm not going to stick with that because we'll be here all night. But um, uh, the Lord kept doing things with what really wasn't a ministry at the time. It was just me going to the hospital. You know, I brought some some friends at times, like the Stanford ministers came and I ended up being at Stanford because of it on the ministry side and, you know, some different friends who were here and there in the healthcare field. Um, so it, it, was, it was an interesting experience. But then more things were happening. How many of you do know we have a Facebook page? Anybody know? How many of you don't know? Okay, a lot of you. Okay, more people don't know than do. So I'll quickly mention the Facebook page. So a few years ago, the Lord guided me to do a, a Facebook page that, um, and I really wasn't that much involved with social media or Facebook, so I wasn't any kind of an expert. In fact, when I started, I didn't know what I was really doing, and I was, you know, you're supposed to do these little tiny post, you know, postings and things. I was, you know, I was medical. It's like, okay, I'm going to do two pages or something. And then my friends would say, no, this is never going to fly on Facebook. You've got to do little tiny posts. So I started doing a medical page to kind of be with the healing that I was doing so much of in the hospitals. Um, I was in a, in a, um, Church, a home church, so I also did some street ministry, which was a lot easier. You know, it would be somebody's stubbed toe, or they hurt their ankle, or, you know, their elbow, or they had a bad cold. It was really different from the hospital ministry. But I did a little bit of that. I was doing, you know, some home things, but mostly in the hospitals. And then, um, but I started this page, and I thought, How, let's do a medical page to complement what I was doing in the hospitals. And and we had about 10 people. I just begged people to come and like the page, and I got 10 people. I didn't get very many people. And, I, and, and the page did horribly. It was an absolute loser of a page. And I worked really hard for a few months, and I was posting and posting and posting. And it's all, um, Pastor Mark can appreciate this, because I understand, you know, from what he was saying, he's interested in diet and nutrition. and. So I was doing lifestyle-based integrative medicine things on the post, and people could care less. And I was really disgusted. <laughs> I didn't like the page. And then after a few months, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Susan, this is not the page I want. He said, I do not want a medical page. <laughs> he was very clear. And the page by that time, maybe we had 15 or 20 people. It had hardly grown. So that was Susan's page. And so he said, we want God's page. So I started doing a completely different kind of page, the way he was guiding me. And he wanted testimonies and what I was seeing with cases and things from the scriptures. That was the page he wanted. As soon as I did that, the page took off. We were getting, for those of you that are new, we were getting hundreds of people in an hour coming on this page. When we were up to 19,000 people really fast, I was having dinner with one of my guy friends who was actually um, doing youth ministry over at Jubilee. I don't know if you guys know Jubilee Church, but he was doing um, 
some youth ministry. He actually brought me in and had me doing some youth ministry with him. So um, anyway, he was looking at my page, and so he looked in on it, and then he looked in on it 10 minutes later. He said, you've gotten 100 more people in 10 minutes. And so that's how the page was growing is God's page. It's currently 1,200,000 people. We went from 10 people to 1,200,000 people. We've had as many as 5 million, 6 million people a week on the page. It's completely God's page. I think I had seen you, I noticed you put a little bit of that up in the, the bio. But the page was really, um, it became a real precious page to me because it was like being in the hospitals. What I saw with the Lord is, again, he's an everything God. You know, if people were coming onto the page not just wanting their esophageal cancer healed or their, you know, lupus or whatever. They wanted their, you know, they were going to be evicted from their house. They wanted help with their house. They wanted help with their flat tires on their car. They, they wanted help because there was drug addiction with the kids. They, they wanted everything. And we were getting a million and a half prayer requests a year coming in. That's a lot of prayer requests. So we started finally to have a prayer team because I had nothing. It was just me running into the hospitals and me starting this page that all of a sudden took off. And how God did this, and again, I apologize for those of you that were here when I was here before, but it was really interesting because, again, I would post something when it became God's page. Instead of, like, one person coming on, we would have 100,000 people coming on one post. And it kept growing. We'd have a quarter of a million coming on one little post, one little half million, 800,000 people. So we were having tons of people on a single post as we were growing from being so little. So these were the things that God was showing me. And the final thing, as I... as Pastor Ron mentioned, we are a new ministry. We became a ministry, um, now it's about, probably we're getting on to a year and a half, so it's a new ministry. And we, we became a ministry because God wanted us to start to train people how to pray for the sick and do it through understanding of how the human body works. Now that's not something that's normally part of ministry training. And what we started out with was 14 medical doctors. There were 14 of us that got together. And we were going to be the training faculty of a new school. That's what we started out with. The medical school of healing, that's what we were. And um, we had two can. we had from Stanford, the medical center, we had two oncologists. You all know what an oncologist is, right? Everybody knows. So we had a research oncologist who's actually a worldwide famous, super famous oncologist who is a super lover of Jesus. He's a very devoted man of the Lord. And he came on our faculty. We had a training oncologist. We had an, um, an endocrinologist from Boise, Idaho, who was actually on the medical school faculty, I think at the University of Washington. And we had... Um, you all know Bethel Church? Everybody knows Bethel. <laughs> so it's a super famous church. So um, we had a, a, a man coming down from Bethel who's on their prayer team. He's an orthopedic surgeon, but he's also a pediatrician. Interesting combination. So he taught pediatrics at our school, and he taught orthopedic surgery. We had a doctor from San Francisco. We had a bunch of San Francisco doctors who's an infectious disease specialist, who was um, an internist, who's like the medical director of her. So we had some very nice, very well-trained, good doctors. But what everyone had in common was they all loved Jesus. And that was the most special thing of all. And everybody we were training at that time was in ministry. Um, for those, I don't know if any of you know Star of David Church? A few of you? Not very many, few. So the, the senior pastors, they have four churches. Sonny and Linda Lara, they were our first students. And then we ended up training their prayer team. So they're third generation for what we're doing, which was really special. And then we had... Um, healing room um, people like Bill George from Redwood City was one of our students. He's heads up the Redwood City healing room. Uh, wonderful people. We had prayer intercessors. Um, a few people from the healthcare field. We had a few people from the chiropractic field who are wonderful. I love both of them. One is, is on our teaching team still and one I was very, they were both wonderful 
super people. We had a dentist from the East Bay, a couple of people from the nursing field, but mostly people from the um, from the from the prayer teams and ministry. And what I was very excited about was we found that when we combined the two, that because a lot of these people were very expert and very anointed, they, it wasn't that they didn't know how to pray, it wasn't that they weren't getting good results, but what they found, like what I found was when you combine the two, and you combine the knowledge and the wisdom from the medical field with all the love and the devotion and the faith and the trust that comes from, from the churches and ministry, they were getting better results than they had ever gotten doing healing prayer. That was very exciting. So that's pretty much how we started. And again, we're new, so I, I don't have much of a history to give all of you. We're, we're new, new. But what happened last year was we were doing the teaching. I was doing a miracle supernatural class. We had an inner healing class. That went on for about five months. And then um, we were doing about one conference a month, and that's where Bethel Church up in Reading was very helpful because we had people from Bethel come down helping us. Like there's a man named Chris Gore. I don't know if any of you know who he is, but he's their head of their whole, I think he has 2,000 people who worked under him. Anyway, he was part of our early team. Chris would come down often, and he would... He was a big help to us. He'd bring a lot of Bethel students. I remember having dinner with like 30 Bethel students. Had a great time. He was a wonderful man. And um, he would come down and he would teach. And, and um, he would come down quite often. We had Andy Mason who heads up their business. He came down. We had Steve, what is his name? He's wonderful. He's the guy who makes you laugh. He's from Bethel. He, I, I don't know why... I should have looked up his last name. We had wonderful people from Bethel when we were just starting out there. Help Ian Andrews, who's very tight in with Bethel. So we had wonderful people, and they were helping us with our conferences. We are trying to do one a month, and then we were doing one healing clinic a month. And, and then the Lord just kept shifting everything, because at, after we had done this for a while, going into the latter part of the year, this is when the church is starting ask, asking us if we would then go to the churches and start to share the healing ministry and pray over people. That's when that shifted was last year. And I was here very much toward the end. I was here right before the New Year's, I remember. I'm just thinking of that now. So you all were part of our, <laughs> our early time when we were just getting out into a lot of churches. And everything has shifted into the new year because we're no longer focusing on the teaching where we are. We, we early on had a couple of um, church partners that were very kind to us, a church in Palo Alto, a church in Sunnyvale, and they were very kind. They let us do our teaching there and our programs and things back last year. We're still actually working with both those churches. We're there every month. They're, they're wonderful churches. And um, so instead of doing a lot of that, we do one class a month. It's an internship. And, um, and what I'm doing now, because as Pastor Ron mentioned, I'm doing a lot of, of work. I'm doing about 25 events a month. It's a huge amount. I don't know how I do it. Only, the, only through God could I do something like this crazy schedule I'm on. <laughs> but the churches are all over the Bay Area. So we're in... Santa Cruz, we're in Salinas, we're in Vallejo, we're in, um, I've been so many times in Fremont, I can't count, we've been in so many churches in Fremont, it's, it's uncountable. Um, we're in Palo Alto, we're, we're just San Jose all the time, we're all over the Bay Area, we've been in Sacramento, we're going up to Northern California, because the churches are more and more wanting just to have this be in the churches. And the training is also regional now. Um, for example, this coming up, um, not this weekend, but the next weekend, I'm going to be in Pleasanton, Dublin, Contra Costa County with a church called Blazing Fire. I don't know if you all know that church, but they have me come every third month, and I do a training. And most of the people taking the training are local churches. They're the pastors from that region. And um, we're training in Palo Alto. We're training in Vallejo. We're training in Santa Cruz. We're training all over the place. And I love doing it because it gets me regionally. 
out of my little area and I get to meet a lot of the most wonderful people who are just are, are awesome people from the different regions. And I love doing the training. And we're also starting, now that's just regular old medical. It's anatomy, physiology, immunology, biochemistry, but it's kind of scaled down to what people can, can deal with if they want to add this to their prayer life. But we're also doing integrative medicine now, which, you know, I was really interested when Pastor Mark was talking, because we are starting to do more and more training for people so they know how to heal themselves, not just knowing about the anatomy or physiology. But I love doing that. I do a lot of it with another medical doctor who's an emergency room doctor named Dr. Cipriano, and she and I do a lot of that together. And the churches, um, we've done some of that at Jubilee Church. I've done actually three things for their women's health where they've asked me to do that kind of teaching for the, at the Jubilee Church. We do it all the time at Star of David. Uh, we're kind of spreading that out because I'm really committed to equipping people on how to take care of themselves and be super healthy. Along with the prayer, God is number one. That he never, you know, you never take him away from... He is the ultra number one. But then I really like people to know how to take care of themselves. Um, I did bring a few samples of the books that I've done in that kind of area because I'm a conventionally trained medical doctor. And when I've done medical teaching at the medical institutions, that's what I'm expected to teach. I sneak in integrative medicine wherever I can, but I'm there to teach conventional medicine. But I do love integrative medicine, and I have a lot of books in, in that field, so I brought some samples. And what can I say, and then we're kind of done with this part. Uh, one, uh, one other thing that the Lord's done that's really interesting is, have any of you been on our live stream? Nobody. Okay. So that's an interesting another story. It's a little bit like our Facebook page. Um, I started to do live stream about, maybe it's almost three months now. And the first time we ever live streamed, we were in Fremont. We were at a wonderful church in Fremont where I've been to so many of the churches doing ministry. And it was a wonderful experience. I love the church. We've been there a couple of times. We've seen wonderful healing miracles. Um, some things are like incredible. You know, like someone with 10 different medical issues and God heals every one of them. Beautiful things of testimonies. And um, at the end of the time, um, some people from our ministry had said, let's do the live stream. I didn't know anything about it. It was kind of like the Facebook page. But we did it, and at the end of it, we had 35,000 people on live stream. And usually you get like one <laughs> or three or nine or something. We had 35,000 people the first time we went out and live streamed. And they were all people needing healing. What they all had in common was they liked it because we're doctors and we're ministers. That's what they wanted. They wanted the healing. And we've kept doing it. We're not doing it here today because I don't have the, the team that does it. Again, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hopeless on that stuff. I'm really good. At, you know, they're usually, I'm usually doing the medical part, but the, you know, I'm learning how to do the live stream. But, but our team, that, that we have about four people that know how to do it. And they're, they're not here today or we'd be live streaming. But we've continued in the last couple of months. God keeps increasing it. So we're going up into the hundreds of thousands. And a low level now is about 300,000. And a high level would be 800,000. Um, so we get a ton of people on live stream. And they're from all over the country. It's, you know, And sometimes they'll say, I'm Sally from South Miami, Florida. Or I'm George from Texas. Or I'm... You know, Larry from Utah or, you know, people from Mississippi or Alabama. And we get people from the Bay Area, too. And the reason they're coming is because they're sick and they're all over the country and they're desperate to get well. We've had thousands of texts and emails from the people and it's all the same. They want healing. They want healing for themselves. They want healing for their family. And so Dr. Cipriano, sometimes she and I will do just special training sessions. Sometimes Ann Hurst and I will do that. We're, all, we're not necessarily doing part of a service, but we're just spending time just giving people a lot of medical information. And where I can give them integrative, I do that, because what they don't need from me is, here, switch off this drug, go on to that drug. They're already fed up with the drugs they're on, and I apologize to everybody here 
who's on drugs, and I don't mean to run that down at all. But a lot of people don't get healed the way they want to get healed from medication. I saw that as a medical doctor. We just, we, we, we train hard, we work hard, but we don't do miracles and we don't cure you. No doctor will tell you in their right mind that they cure cancer. We do not cure it. We get you in remission if things go well. The disease can go dormant. But cure, we do not do. There's nothing to say you're not going to get a second cancer or a third cancer. I was just praying for a man down in L.A. where the family brought me in to, to pray for him and pray for his niece. He's got four different kinds of cancers. These are not metastatic. These are four different primaries. He was just in the hospital with sepsis. This is a sick man. And his niece also, she has one cancer. But when you look at the family history, there's a generational curse. Many people in the family have cancer. You don't usually see people with four different kinds of cancer. That's not normal. It's not something that I can tell you I see a lot of. I don't. But he's, and they're from Southern California. So, you know, they, they wanted me to do a session with them. We had to do it over the phone. And the man started out really negative, really bitter and upset. And, you know, he, I was talking to him, asking him about his medical history. And he's grouchy and grumbling and angry and, you know, telling me how horrible he felt. And I understand, you know, he'd just come out of the hospital and he has horrible disease. He's, but he's really almost like he, you know, took my head off. He was so upset. And, but we had a wonderful prayer session at the end. He had totally shifted. He had gone very loving because God was touching him. And he said, I feel wonderful. That was his exact words to me. He said, I feel my pain is gone. He said, I feel better. He was much more soft and caring. And it made, I felt really good about that because I really wanted God to touch him in his heart. And, and his niece, who I've prayed for, she had a wonderful healing from, from the session that I did with her. Um, the, you know, so God can do wonderful things. So that's kind of the end of that stuff. I do want to share one cool testimony from one of the churches, and then I'm going to show some slides. Um, one of the churches, we, we go, there are some churches that we go to quite regularly, where, like Star of David, they have us come up, you know, every month, every other month, because they really want to keep bringing the healing to the church family. So one of the church, we've been to a couple of different churches in Vallejo. Oh, one very cool thing I want to mention that I'm super excited about is next month, in about four weeks, I'm going to be in Vacaville. I'm going to be at a church called The Mission. I've never been there. Have any of you ever been to that church? I can't tell you a thing about the church. I've never been there. I just know it's a church like Jubilee. It's supposed to be a big church. Anyway, we're going to do our first training for medical doctors. Isn't that totally cool? We have a, it's being organized by medical doctors, um, um, an allergist, and then a, someone who heads up a department of radiology. I don't know a whole lot about. But they're organizing it for doctors and nurses, and they are going to invite you know, pastors and ministers. And I'm really excited about that. And then some churches in the South Bay, um, one of our faculty who's a, who's a physician down in the South Bay wants to get us in the hospitals. So two of the churches of, that I ministered at have come to me and said, would you partner with us because we want this to get in the hospitals so that you're sharing this with the doctors. And I thought, this is all happening at the same time. And I love it because we really want the doctors to pray and we want the ministers to you know, know a little bit more about the body. So God's kind of bringing it all together. And that's really exciting to me. I think it's awesome. So one of these churches that I pray in, I go back quite frequently. This is a very interesting testimony. Um, one of the women from who's part of the church family, when I was there very recently, um, asked if I would pray for her. <clears throat> it turned out she had bilateral kidney cancer. So both kidneys are affected. She's super, you know, not a very nice disease. She's a sick person. So she said, would you pray for me? So I did. I went back up to the church, and we were in a really bad traffic jam. We're up in the East Bay. We're going to the North Bay. <clears throat> and the, um, 
So I had to call the pastor because, you know, I said, I don't even know if we're going to make it to the church in time because there must have been a three or four car crash. And we're just creeping along at, you know, a mile, a mile an hour. So I called him and I explained the situation. Luckily, God, praise God, he got us there on time. But the pastor said, I want to share a testimony with you. He said, you prayed for the woman at our church with a bilateral kidney cancer, and her name is Susan as well, but it's a different last name. It's not Richards. It's another, another name. But he said, after you prayed for her, um, her, her doctors took her to surgery. They obviously didn't think she was healed, but she went through a surgical procedure, and they were sure she had kidney cancer, because that's her diagnosis. So they go in, and they can't find any cancer. But they did find, that the pastor was really funny when he told me this, he's the head of the church, he said there was a, a little lump the size of a peanut. That's how he described it. He said there was a peanut-sized mass. So the surgeons were really excited, there's our cancer. They go into this lump, there's no cancer, it's totally benign. So they close her up, and she's completely healed. There's not a drop of cancer there. So then I'm at a, I know, it's really cool. So I'm at another church. I'm in the South Bay. We're at a church called Freedom Worship Center. It's another, I don't, any of you know Freedom Worship Center? It's a really nice church. We go there all the time. We do healing there every month. I love the church. I love the pastors. They're, they're wonderful people. So we're starting the service, and we're on live stream. And all these people from all over the country are on live stream with us, but we had some people who were local. And so a woman, just as I'm starting the service, gets on live stream, and she said, I have a testimony. Turns out she was the exact same church that this other Susan had her kidney cancer healed. So she gets on, and she said, I was at the church, and she said, I asked you to pray for proxy for my nephew. And he had kidney cancer, and it was in both kidneys. I thought, oh my goodness, that's like amazing. And, um, and she said, after you prayed for him, there was no more kidney cancer. And then the most touching thing of all is she, we're on live stream, she sends a picture of her nephew. Now, I don't know exactly when the picture was taken. I don't know if it was taken this year or a few years ago or what, but it was the most beautiful picture. It was a pic. Could have been five years ago, I don't know. But it was a picture of her nephew in a graduation robe with his cap and gown getting his diploma. And it's a beautiful picture. And it's a picture with bushes and purple flowers. It's beautiful. And it just made my heart feel so good because here's a man, he's been completely cured by God. It's the same cancer as this other woman. And here he is alive, and he's doing really well. It's a proxy prayer. I never met him. I don't know where he lives. I didn't ask her. I don't know if um, where, where he's from. I, I don't know if, he, if he's from another part of California or he's from the East Coast. Anyway, he just looked radiant. It was a beautiful picture. Made me really happy. And, um, and, and so that was another interesting thing. Then I was at the church just at the church again, and the pastor shares another story with the whole church family. And he said, there's another woman who was here, and he said, you prayed for her, and she had cancer in both kidneys. <laughs> so there's a third person from the same church, and they all have bilateral kidney cancer. And he said she had a complete healing of her kidney cancer. And I thought, this is completely, uh, this is so incredible. I've ne I, I just couldn't even explain it. How could you have three people from the same church, one as a proxy prayer, and two are people from the church, and you're dealing with cancer in both kidneys on every single person, and God totally heals everybody. And, and two, of the, two of them are coming from the pastor, and one's coming from um, the woman who had emailed us on live stream. Anyway, I thought that was totally cool. And you never know what God's going to send your way. I kind of am sharing that because God is full of surprises and he loves us all and, and every one of us is precious and special. So I want to go ahead and show some pictures. And um, so, oh, this is a wonderful, wonderful testimony. Now this is, a, this is have any of you seen this? You have. Oh, well, you know the story then. The one person in here. I've shown this not a lot, but I show it occasionally. 
I'm so glad that you saw it. You have a big smile. You know how cool the testimony is. What you're looking at is a woman who's 94 years old. And this is a picture of her the day after she died. Now you're looking at a dead person who's now reading a newspaper. So that's a pretty cool, <laughs> pretty cool testimony. So this is a woman who became a believer in Jesus when she was 93. That is her, that is her testimony. She was not a believer until she's 93 years old. This woman, I mentioned Dr. Cipriano, who's a really good friend of mine, who's a medical doctor, and we do a lot of teaching together. So Dr. Cipriano, she was a patient of Dr. Cipriano's. And um, Dr. Cipriano knew her and the family pretty well. So this is a woman who had very severe hypertension. She had coronary artery disease, and she had a massive stroke. You know, a little bit like that man who came back from the dead. It's amazing what God does. So she basically, she died, and the family's there, and the grandma's gone, and everybody's sad. And the doctor, you know, went took her through an, an exam, and, and there was nothing there. She, she asked this woman that you're seeing reading the paper, tell me your name. Woman couldn't answer anything because she's gone. She, you know, where do you live? Nothing. Can you move your arms? Can you move your, you know, she took her through a evaluation, and there's nothing to answer. So she called me. She said, we have an emergency. She said, we have a 94-year-old woman who's passed on. And she said, she's either going to go home to the Lord and be in heaven. She's a believer now. Or God's going to do a miracle. He's going to bring her back. So she said, would you pray for her? So I prayed for the woman. I prayed for her really intensively. I never met her. It was a proxy prayer. She's in San Francisco. I'm down in Palo Alto, and I'm praying for a dead woman that I'd never met. <laughs> but I prayed for her, and then Dr. Cipriano prayed for her. And the amazing thing was this woman came back to life. And the fun thing was Dr. Cipriano put her through the same exact evaluation, and this time the woman got really angry. Dr. Cipriano is asking her things like, tell me your name and where do you live? The woman got furious with her, she said. She said, of course I know my name. Of course I know where I live. Why are you asking me stupid questions? I know all this. You know, of course I can move my arm and my leg. She couldn't understand why she was getting these dumb questions. So this is a picture of her. We can go to the next picture. She's feeding herself. She's reading the paper. Dr. Cipriano said she, this woman could walk as if nothing had happened. She could literally hike. I mean, 94 years old. And the Lord could have totally taken her, but he chose not to. And she was a little bit like the man from the ICU that I told you about. It's like it never happened. Look at that. She's feeding herself. She's relaxing. She's reading the paper. She doesn't have all the stuff that you have when you're a serious stroke patient. And so she's doing really well. <laughs> so it's, it's a very cool testimony. So let's go to the next one. And this is another really special one. What you're looking at is a beautiful picture, of course, a man who's playing the keyboard. Very precious man. I, I really think he's just the nicest, sweetest guy. And he was up at a church that we were ministering at a couple of times in the North Bay. And um, so his testimony was, I've been, the church has had me there a couple of times, and very nice church. I, I really enjoyed my time there. And this man is not a well man. I took this picture of him the second time I was there because you're watching, he is the one person they had doing worship at the church. There was nobody else. He's playing the keyboard, and when I first met him, he could never have done anything like this. So he should, this is a man who should never have been in the church, ever. He was too ill. And so the first time I met him, um, he was in extreme pain. Every muscle in his body ached. He was on a lot of pain meds. Um, he was severe hypertensive and um, diabetic. Unregulated. He was in terrible shape. He shouldn't have been at the church. He should have been, in, as far as I'm concerned, he should have been in the hospital. I don't even know how he was standing. And but again, this is the second time. He's, you can see the Lord's already obviously done something with him. So after we prayed over the whole church body, I called people into small groups. And we like to do that a lot because you know, we're going to do that here tonight because we want to give people an opportunity to get 
individual prayer as well as group prayer. So I didn't know a whole lot about him, but I'm in a small group, and we have a lot of cancer patients. We have people who are in, you know, organ system rejection, you know, kidney rejection, and you know, on dialysis and all kinds of stuff. So this man is standing behind me to the side, and all of a sudden, as I'm praying, he starts yelling. And he says, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. And I didn't know what was gone, <laughs> but I kept praying, and, at the, and he's, he's actually saying it's gone to the man next to him. It's gone, it's gone. So at the end, it turned out all his pain was gone. So the man goes back up to where he was sitting, and he checks his other reads. He checked his blood sugar level, normal. He checked his um, blood pressure, normal. So the man um, spent the whole rest of the time at the church going from person to person to person. Every time I looked at this man, he had a new person. And he's literally just showing off and telling what God had done to heal him. It was amazing. It's like he, there wasn't anybody he didn't want to tell his story to. <laughs> like if he could grab you, you would hear his story. And then the next time I'm up there, and here he is, and I say, wow, it's the same guy, and he's playing the keyboard. And he told me he was off of his all his medication, no more pain meds, no more anything. And at the end of the time, we had some people from our team there. He stood next to us, and he just said, I love God. He just said over and over again, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. And it was just precious. And I want to share one other thing with you, which is that the senior pastor needed some prayer too. He, was, he had Parkinson's. Nicest guy. I love this. Love the pastor and love his family, but he really needed some help. He was kind of, you know, typical Parkinsonian. He was on a walker and a cane, and he could hardly walk and navigate. I felt really badly for him because he was so slow and so rigid and tremor and not in very good shape. So afterwards, we we prayed for the. Um, I was with one of the other people from our team, so. We prayed for the pastor, and I was so excited because I, I saw, after we finished, he laid down his walker. He was literally running up and down the halls. And it was just the coolest thing to see because he's running. He wasn't even, I look at him, I say, wow, he's running. And I was really excited. That was how everything ended at the church. It was a wonderful ending. Made me super happy. I've been back there, and he's doing exceptionally well. He works out in the gym. He had a couple of little, not par so much the Parkinson's, he had a couple of little trauma injury things. When I prayed, I was beautiful. He was like this, like, taking everything in. And he called me a few days later, and he said, I'm feeling great. So I, just the Lord is just so wonderful. He wants every one of us healed. He doesn't want anybody to be sick at all. Again, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So let's go to the next one. And uh, this is a wonderful, um, wonderful um, testimony. What you're looking at is a woman who's in her late 70s who has very serious heart disease. This woman has high blood pressure. She is a diabetic. Um, she has valvular disease. Um, trying to remember what she had. She has mitral valve disease. And um, um, her echo, her ejection fraction, everything is off on this woman. She has terrible reads, and she was just getting worse and worse and worse. She was really doing poorly. So I was asked to pray for her. And again, it's one of these things that God does. Um, the family, which is a medical family, um, doctors in the family, they took her back to the cardiologist right away. Cardiologists tested her. They couldn't find a thing wrong. All of her tests were normal. All, the, all of the cardiac tests. And she's doing beautifully. She's in really good shape. She's strong. She's healthy. Um, we saw, I can't remember if I brought this picture when I was here last time. Um, we've seen that with another... Um, actually a senior pastor of a church um, in the North Bay. And this is something that I'm sharing with you that is shared to the church family. It's not a secret or anything. This was a um, woman who's senior pastor who has, um, again, really poor heart disease. She has seven stents. She's got high blood pressure, you know, ter terrible function of her heart. And... Um, 
So the past, her husband, who's also a senior pastor, asked me to pray for her. The next time I was up at the church, um, I'm just, you know, kind of doing what I do, but this, the husband, who's the senior pastor, gets up next to me. He's, you know, by the podium, and he says, I have a testimony I want to share with the whole church family. So he brought his, his wife to the cardiologist who tests her all the time. He's, he's used to her having horrible reads. And what he said was he said, these are the best reads I've ever seen. He, and, and the husband you know, explained, because they're both pastors. And he, he was really funny. He said to the church family, he said the doctor who's a cardiologist spent the whole time saying, I'm happy, 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 happy. He said he just kept repeating it over and over again. In fact, when I saw him again, the pastor, he says all the doctor does is say how happy he is every time I bring my wife in, because she's doing so well. And I have a beautiful picture of her, you know, kind of she's on the ocean with a big smile on her face. So I love these things that the Lord can do, because only the Lord can do this. I can't do this. You know, the, the doctors can't do this. The Lord can do it. So this was a wonderful healing. So let's go to the next one. And this is a wonderful, wonderful testimony. I'm really happy to share this with you all. So I want you to look at this beautiful family. So you're looking, of course, at a husband and a wife and a precious little boy. I don't know if he's 8 or 10 years old. I, I forget. He's, he's either 8 or 10. So anyway, this is the, the, the testimony. So this family I first met in San Francisco. They came to a church that I had been at. It's the first time I was at the church. And um, after I had, you know, we had done the general prayer, they came up to me. Now, they did not look like this picture. When they came up to me, they were both crying, and they both hated each other. They spent the whole time telling me how much they hated each other. They're crying. The wife said, all they would, this is what they would do. The wife would be there crying, and she would say, you're a complete jerk, and she would say, this is why you're a jerk, and I hate you. And then the husband would say, I'm a jerk, but I hate you too, and this is why I hate you. And this is what I'm listening to the whole time, is them talking about all the reasons they hated each other, and they're crying and crying. They never stop crying. And finally, I, we interrupted it a little bit, and, and I got them to say that they didn't think it was going to work, but they would try. But we still hate each other. So that, and then I made them promise me, I actually promised the Lord, that they would stop putting each other down. That was the one thing I could get them to do, was promise they would not say bad things about each other. That was all I... That was all I asked them to do. So when they left, they're both crying, and they're still both not liking each other. So I was at another church in San Francisco doing ministry not long after that. Totally different church. Had a great time at the church, praying over everybody, doing lots of hugs at the end. So we had a wonderful time, really fun. And, and in the back are two people. And so I go to the back, and they're smiling, and they say hi to me. They knew me, and they say, do you recognize us? It took me a few minutes, and all of a sudden I realized who they were. And it was that couple that hated each other. And the, the husband said to me, it worked. That was the first words out of his mouth was, it worked. And he said, we, we healed. And they both shared with me that the Lord had healed their marriage. It was really beautiful. And they were happy. He said, please keep praying for us. That was his one thing. He said, we want to come today to get more prayer. And he said, please keep praying for us. And they, it was such a shift because when you look at the family, look at their faces. They're, I never took a picture of them when I first met them. I would never have taken a picture of them crying and saying how much they hated each other. They would have, like, hated me. You know, I said, can I take a picture of you? And they're hating each other. So I didn't even go near that. But anyway, they're smiling and they're happy. And the little son came in. I remembered him from the first church. He was actually singing on stage, this cute little boy. He was so precious. He was dancing and singing. And it was a beautiful healing. And, and I wanted to share this with you because we're so used to talking about, you know, the miracle cancer cure and the miracle bringing back from the dead. But this is an important miracle because so many people deal with upset. And usually when you're sick physically, your mind doesn't feel good. And a lot of everybody are dealing with family issues, and they're dealing with, 
the, you know, problems at work and, you know, all kinds of things that are affecting their mind. So it was really precious for me that I could bring this up and show this to you because this is just as important. In fact, I think it's more important to the Lord because he never says anything about lupus in the Bible. <laughs> he doesn't talk about liver cancer. What does he talk about? Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. You know, patience, love is patient, love is kind. You know, John 15, you know, I am the vine and you are the branch. He wants us to conform our mind to him. So I think this is what's really important to the Lord, is people loving one another. And, and I think he spends our whole lives teaching us how to love. Love one another, be kind to people, care about our brothers and sisters in Christ. Take care of children, take care of the widows, take care of the poor, take care of each other. So it was really special to me that I had actually a picture like this that I could, could bring. Made, makes me very happy. I see them and, it, and I just get a big smile on my face because it's, it's a beautiful thing. So let's go to the next one. And um, this is a very nice testimony. You're looking at a woman from um, Salinas. And I was down there at a couple of churches doing ministry very recently. And this is a woman who's blind. And she was completely blinded in one eye. And she was very impaired in the other eye. And um, she was having, you know, floaters and weird shaped things she was describing, you know, weird strings with blobs at the end. And she could barely see from one eye. She had a little bit of vision. The other eye was completely gone. And so um, we had a lot of wonderful miracles when we were down there. And she was one of them because at the end of the service, she came up to me. She said, I can see now. She said, I'm, I have great vision. And, and so she, we're in the church. And you can see she's got a big smile. And then uh, she let me take her picture. And she said I could share her testimony. And uh, it was a beautiful healing. She's very happy looking. I love when God heals you. You tend to be really happy looking. And so I, I'm happy that a lot of my pictures are smiley pictures. And it was a very, very nice um, experience for her. So it was nice for me, too. I was really, really happy. We saw some great things when we were, we were there. We, we saw one woman with a 105 fever that crashed down to normal, and all of her symptoms of her infectious disease went away. We saw a lot of cool stuff when we were down there. Let's see, do I have any more pictures? Oh, okay, so this is a very cool picture. Um, this is a picture of a little boy who has um, um, ADHD. He's, he, he was a boy who was very impaired. He, again, in some ways the kids are very similar to the kids with autism. They, they, they have de a learning disability. They have delayed speech. They just can't bond. And um, it's a different illness, but, you know, there's a lot of... Um, clinical things that are similar. And I've prayed over a lot of autistic kids, and I've prayed over um, kids with ADHD. I've prayed over kids with cerebral palsy, all kinds of, of things of children. Um, kids with cancer, you know, I mean, everything, kids with eczema, everything you can imagine. So he, he was a really nice testimony because he was doing so poorly. Like, again, I... You know, I'm kind of comparing them in some ways to the kids who are autistic. And he was very hyperactive. He, he, just, he just couldn't sit still for a minute. Um, I was sharing, in fact, um, another case that I didn't bring today. But it's um, a family where both kids are autistic. So not just one child, but a family where the parents had to deal with both kids. Um, I will say that the, the sad thing is that um, one of the parents is a medical doctor. So they were not only, they had been praying over the child, and one's a medical doctor, but they didn't really know how to pray medically. They, they, they prayed as if it to go into the parts of the brain. They didn't know the kinds of things that God had guided me to do back when I first started this work for him. So they weren't getting anywhere, and the, and the parents looked like they hadn't slept in months. They were exhausted. I've never seen, you know, the, the father look like he had, you know, 
been on call for like a year. He was so tired looking. They were exhausted. And um, so they just couldn't get anywhere with the kids. And I was sharing this with It's the except the older one would beat up the younger kid. Unless he would beat up the younger kid, they wouldn't have anything to do with each other. It was the only time the kids would interact. When I was with them, they were just flying all over the place. They had nothing to do with each other, and they couldn't speak, and they couldn't bond, and they had learning problems against like this little boy. And um, the beautiful thing was God gave an incredible healing to both of the kids. I have pictures. I have pictures of the kids. Sometimes I will show the show that I, at some of the events. You know, I'll show different kinds of things of different people. But um, um, and they couldn't focus. They couldn't do anything. So I remember when I was praying for like the older one. I have pictures of him. He's just flying all over. He can't focus. And as I'm praying over him, you can see he's starting to focus because he's looking at a board. I forget what it was, a board game or something he had to do things with. He's very focused. And then all of these functions started coming back. And when I saw the family again, they wanted me to do one more prayer. And this was a prayer not because the kids were sick anymore. They were bonding. The kids were playing with each other. Um, they were they they could speak and they were doing much better in school and what they wanted was a prayer really not for the, so much the kids but they were having trouble with the school and the the support because they they felt like the school was not giving them the support that they needed given how well the kids were doing it was more a prayer for that but the parents looked so good when they came back it looked like they're sleeping and they're relaxed and they're rested and it was a wonderful thing it made me very happy and the kids were focused and beautiful beautiful time it made me really happy to to go back and see the parents looking healed as well as the, the kids. So a similar situation with this little boy. Again, hyperactive. He doesn't bond with anybody. He's doing terribly in school. Nothing's working. And the, and the um, teachers beg the family to put the little boy on medication. They put the little, this was right before I got called in. They put him on medication and he gets worse. They just did not have the heart to tell the school. They, then the school said, he really needs medication. He's even worse. And they did not have the heart to tell the, the, um, the, the, the school that he was on medication. They, they just couldn't even share that with them. You know, they, was too, they thought it was too horrible to, to share that with the school. So then I get called in. And I got called in through a... Um, through a, not directly through the family, it was through somebody who's um, Christian and, and more in the counseling ministry side. So I got called in and um, prayed over this little boy. He was just really impossible the first time I met him to deal with because there's no focus. He's running around. He, live, he, he wasn't relating to me, wasn't relating to his family, nothing. And he was very, almost violent. He was really difficult to deal with. I could see why the school was having so much problem with him. And he was in special classes, and he wasn't doing well in the special classes. So the Lord started healing him right away. I had to pray over his brain. I had to pray over his nervous system. I had to pray over his endocrine. There's a lot of things you have to pray into in a lot of detail. But I could see that things were starting to switch a bit because he was calming down. And within a few days, I was called by the friend of the family, and they said he's starting to shift. They said, this little boy is settling down. We're seeing changes in him. So I went back there, and he was really different. He was bonding to people. He, was, he wasn't violent. He wasn't running around. He was literally starting to relate to every one of his family members. It was really a special healing. And the little boy's doing really well in school. He's learning how to play the drums. I have a picture of him playing the drums. I didn't put it in there, but I have a picture of him doing that. And he's really bonded with his mom. He and his mom, they pray together. They have relationship. And I love when the Lord does these healings because he's healing the whole family. 
It's like this other family I was mentioning with the two autistic kids. So when you heal the kids, you're healing the parents, you're healing the grandparents, you're healing everybody, because everybody's so involved with the problems, and he's doing much better in school. So anyway, I just wanted to, to share that. And you can see, look at he's focused. You're not looking at a kid who's all over the place. He's focused, and he's you know, quiet, and he's changed, he's shifted. Let's see, do I have any other pictures or is that it? That's it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get ready to do um, healing with you all. And you know, the one thing I forgot to do, I got so excited about coming up here and starting to visit with you all, is usually I'll pass paper around so you can put down what your prayer request is. So I'm, maybe what I'll have you all do as I just introduce this is, here, let me give you some more pens and we can spread the paper, here's some more paper, this, so we can try to do this quickly. But I do want to invite all of you to put down what you need for, oh, Marilyn, I didn't realize it was you when <laughs> you're sitting over there. Good to see you. <laughs> Wonderful. Marilyn's been one of the students in our school. If you, whatever you want, if you, if you do want to be on our mailing list, Put down your name, put down your um, email address, and put down your text number, because then we'll keep you apprised of what we're doing, because God's always shifting. Then, you don't have to do it, only if you want to, you know, be on our list. But, but then put down what you want prayer for, and we're trying to spread as, this out as quickly as we can. And um, if you want proxy prayer for somebody else, you know, Whatever you all want, we're here to do. And um, um, so Marilyn's here, and, and I, are you okay, Ray, if I mention you? So one of our other students is here. I'm going to have you raise your hand. Big raise. That's Ray, and he's an um, amazing man of God. He's part of our intern program. He's awesome. When I stand next to him and, and, and he's been at our events praying, I always think, you know, I'm next to a senior pastor or something. He, he's shaking his head, but he's an awesome man of God, and he's, he's kind, and he's loving, and he's caring, and he also knows a lot. So he's, he's a wonderful, um, wonderful man of God. So we do have a couple of our people here today that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, we're going to start with the prayers for you all. That's why I wanted you all to um, fill out the, the sheets. And while you're doing that, because there's some of you that are new, I just want to share a few things with you. So, in doing as much prayer work as I've done, you know, I'm pretty clear, having prayed for thousands and thousands and thousands of people now, you know, what, what I see with the Lord. And one of the things I've been blessed, as I mentioned, is I've prayed over virtually everything I can imagine medically. You know, lots of common things, but because I've been in the hospital so much, I prayed for some very rare things, or some things that are not so common. Um, so I'm used to seeing everything from more common things to some very unusual, very hard to heal things, some things that there's virtually no healing for. And um, at least in the natural, you know, in the regular medical world. And so what I've seen with the Lord is I've seen he, that he kind of has his own plan with everybody. I've seen thousands of people have what we'd call instant miracle healings. You know, I've seen some of these things I show, like the man playing the keyboard. And I love to see that because it's really fun and people are really excited. And, um, but some people have more what we call progressive healing. And to me, it's all, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of all the same, although the instant super healings are, are always really exciting. But what I'm clear on with the Lord is that everybody can get healed. Whether he's giving you an instant miracle or he's taking you through what I'd call progressive miracles, because everything in itself is a miracle when you're getting healed that way. Um, it's, it's kind of God's choice and that everybody can end up healed. What you really have to do is keep your faith. You've got to keep your faith and trust in the Lord. If you lose your faith, the enemy is attacking you, and he really, 
the enemy doesn't want any of us to heal. When you really come down to it, as far as the enemy is concerned, he'd like everybody to be sick forever, and he'd like nobody to be close to God. As far as the enemy is concerned, when you're happy, he's miserable. God heals you, the enemy couldn't be more miserable. You're sick, enemy is thrilled. <laughs> he's like so happy. So that's why I really want to encourage you is that everything can be healed unless God wants to take you back to heaven. Like if he, like that 94-year-old woman, he could have easily taken her back to heaven, but he chose not to. So unless it's your time to be with God, everybody can be healed. It's just, it's just, how does he do it? And one of the great testimonies that I want to share is a woman who um, was at Star of David Church with us. And you, some of you guys know Star of David, right? Who doesn't know Star of David? Okay, but a fair number of you know. It's in San Jose. Um, it's The pastors are the Laras. They're, they were among our first students. They have four churches. They have their San Jose church. They have three other churches that they head up. Wonderful people, super people. So I was at Star of David, and um, there was a woman there in a wheelchair who had cerebral palsy. She's in her 20s. And she's always been wheelchair bound. She has very severe disease. And um, I was praying over the church family, and I'm, I'm just sharing this with you in terms of when I talk about progressive healing. So I was praying over the church family, and she's there in her wheelchair, and all of a sudden she hears a lot of noises. And it's her legs. And her legs are bent, and they're in very poor shape. She can't walk, really. So all of a sudden, God straightens her legs out. So she goes over, she gets out of the wheelchair, she goes over to um, Linda Laro, who's the senior pastor. And she shows that she can walk, and then she comes over to me. She's walking, and she was very sweet. She actually walked over to a, um, one of the stores near there, and she bought some flowers. And she came back, gives me some flowers at the end of the service. They're really flowers for God, <laughs> but she gives them to me, and it was really precious. And then she'd had this huge miracle. Now, I mention her because she's a perfect example where you could say she's had this giant miracle. She, does she even need prayer again? You know, she could say, thank you, God, I had the miracle. I don't need prayer. I'm perfect. She didn't do that. Now, I, I mentioned this because this is a woman with a huge miracle, but everything is progressive. That's the point I want to make, is you could have ten miracles, and God is never going to be done with any of us, ever. Till the day we pass on, you could end up being a hundred years old. And it's never going to be that God thinks you don't need any more love, you don't need any more of his heart. There's always things he's going to do for us forever. And, and um, Melissa, the, the girl I'm mentioning, she had a series of things then. Her, her legs continued to keep healing. Like she told a really cool story. She went and got a pedicure. She gets pedicures, and she said her pedicurist um, was noticing how her toes were getting better and her feet were getting better. And so even on a detail level, the Lord keeps healing her. She had another condition called endometriosis. I don't know how many of you know endometriosis. The women nod. I don't know about the guys. Anyway, it's a painful disease. It can cause infertility, causes painful menstrual cycles. A lot of people end up with surgical procedures, hysterectomies, laparoscopic surgery. It's not a very nice disease. She wanted, after the cerebral palsy, she had that too. She wanted God to heal her from that. So he, get, he starts healing that. She came another time where she had some infections. Wants healing for that. God heals that. None of these are as big a deal as getting out of a wheelchair. She wanted healing for depression. She went to the church not long ago. She would go to different churches, by the way, that we were doing ministry. I can think of at least three different churches. I never know when she's going to show up. But the last time I saw her, I was with one of the other people from our ministry, and at the end of the service, um, we were by the door, and she just looked radiant. She looked happy and radiant, and we both commented from our ministry how wonderful she looked. She was full of joy and full of energy, and she just said, you know, she's so grateful to the Lord, 
And she really understands, even with this super miracle, that life is progressive. And there's always things that the Lord can heal us from. And she's a beautiful example of what I call progressive miracles. And so I just wanted to share this with you because whether you have an instant healing or it's more progressive miracles, the Lord will take care of you. He will always be with you and he'll always love you. And he, he will do it in his perfect way.